Hi, I'm Luke Shervell. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today's t-shirt, Dana Dolly. Uh, I met Mike at Cinegear. Uh, Mike's the man behind Dana Dolly, and uh, I think Dana is his wife. I don't know who's on the back of this t-shirt, but could be her. Anyway, uh, solid product, great guy. Last year, spoke with Brian Eustace at Cinegear 2017, and he kind of gave us the rundown of the Fresnel lines from Mole Richardson, so the, the very color units. And, uh, you know, below baby, but baby, junior, senior, and then the tenor uh, unit, the, their, their, their biggest uh, head, was um, still only daylight or tungsten. And it had a pretty good sized ballast as well. Well, things have changed. Hello, welcome to Mole Richardson. I'm Brian Eustace, uh, Senior Vice President of Engineering. Um, and I'd like to present to you today our very tenor, which is a variable uh, color changing uh, Fresnel, uh, 10K, rated at 10K. The actual wattage of it is actually 1600 watts. Uh, and it draws about 14 amps, which means you can basically plug it into a standard uh, household circuit uh, under, under 15 amps. Uh, it changes color temperature from 2700K to 6500K, and it also has a plus or minus green uh, adjustment, so, if you, so for, for very minor adjustments. Um, what's unique about it is that it doesn't have a separate power supply. The power supply is built into the trough itself, so it's totally self-contained. Um, I don't think there's a light this size on the market that doesn't have a, a, a ballast or power supply, whatever you want to call it, which is separate with cables and that, so it's a compact as it can be for a, for a 10K equivalent. Uh, when I talk about 10K equivalent, that was in reference to tungsten, okay? You can see the size of it. It's pretty rugged uh, built. Uh, it's basically, even though it's an LED, it's built in the same uh, mold tradition of where we built our lights very rugged with castings, uh, skid plates, you know, everything, you know, even the, the, the barn door clips are cast. So we haven't gone away from our uh, construction of even our older lights. So that, that's a great benefit, whether you're using on the set or if you're a rental company renting them. A lot of the LEDs today are designed not to withstand the, the rough and tumble of uh, rental. It has uh, a unique operating system, which is also designed by Mole. Uh, it's it's software driven, and uh, so we have the ability to upgrade the software with uh, new features as they become available or improvements. So if you buy the light today and we make some improvements to the software, it will be available to uh, download and update it. So even when you buy it today, you can get the benefits of improvements a year from now that the new guy will be getting. Uh, it has multiple communication systems. It has the standard wire DMX, it has Lumen Radio uh, DMX, which is wireless uh, DMX. It has Bluetooth. Uh, we actually have our own Mole, D Mole LED app, which actually, as of today, is on the App Store. So it's pretty cool that they've been able to get that ballast into the head. It makes for a pretty heavy head, but uh, you know, really nice to have it all in there, all that capability, touchscreen, Wi-Fi, Lumen Radio, on and on. Pretty slick. They didn't have a finished unit there at the show. I think they said there were like two in existence. So they're still working on it. You know, the spot flood wasn't all the way uh, there. And uh, it'll be nice to see that in a couple months. You know, the whole idea of taking a single source like tungsten or HMI and translating that to uh, one warm to cool emitter, that's asking a lot. And, and now you've got all these different colors in a, you know, trying to make it seem like a single source. That's a technological feat. All mole LEDs are designed by mold themselves. It's not like something you can buy off the shelf. 
uh, especially in the bigger lights. Um, the LED cluster is compacted as tight as possible to achieve sort of that single light source effect so that when you cut it, you don't get uh, too many multiple edges. There's also some uh, filtering done with the, the glass Fresnel itself to give you that, that uh, effect of a, of a single source. Taking some of the latest LED dye technology with higher outputs and being able to condense them into a, a small size uh, and to make the source appear as one source because all LEDs are multiple source, no matter whatever anyone tells you. They're multiple, multiple dyes, hundreds of dyes. And to make that appear as one light source uh, is very challenging and it involves uh, filtering to sort of merge the, the light streams together. Uh, it involves uh, little tricks of the trade, which I'm probably not going to disclose today, but uh, things, things that we've learned over the years uh, with the LEDs. And um, you can uh, talk to a lot of the rental companies that have our current 10K single sources. I think we're probably the only 10K light that it appears as a single source, and, lot of, and um, that's, why they, that's why they like it. Yeah, looking forward to seeing the, the quality of, of that unit through a Fresnel, you know, a nice cuttable light uh, with an amazing amount of output and some you can just plug into the wall. The list price on this light is in the range of uh, seventeen to eighteen thousand dollars list. So that that translates whatever you know dealer you're working with and whatever discount. Uh, most people are familiar with their discount structures. It's a little more than the single color. Uh, not much more, but there is a, is a little bit of premium because you're getting basically two lights in one. You're getting a daylight and a tungsten or a 4000K, which are probably the three most uh, popular colors that are going to be used out there. Uh, and, uh, and green magenta. Yeah, and the green magenta. Uh, availability on this is uh, roughly about two to three months from now, about uh, late summer is, 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 is the plan. Uh, they get it into production and um, we hope to hit those dates. So across the aisle from Old Richardson was a company called Vision Smith and they make uh, retrofit emitters that go into existing airy or mole Fresnels, maybe other units as well, but uh, and they have it, you know, pretty small up to, and I'm not quite sure, they're at least 2K, maybe more. They had a, a housing there was that was like a T5 housing, but I don't think it was a 5K uh, emitter in there. Um, but that too, you know, they're, they're bringing that sort of single source idea to the Fresnel. And, um, and that's, that's a worthy uh, goal. I don't know much about the company, uh, we've been invited, uh, John Barron's uh, director of photography and myself have been invited to visit them uh, north of San Francisco where, where they're based. And so that might be a, a little uh, uh, field trip uh, in the future. Anyway, uh, that's sort of an update on Fresnel's uh, that I was able to see at Cinegear this year. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.